what's going on guys so as you can see I've got three controllers here I've got a PS4 controller an Xbox one controller and a Nintendo switch pro controller and basically in this video I'm gonna be taking a look at all three of these controllers and you know seeing which one I think is the best controller um, so I've kind of made a, a criteria list over here um, to decide which controller is the best and I've actually made a video similar to this in the past um, but it was just on the PS4 and Xbox One controller. Um, I'll put a link in the description if you want to see that one. Um, you can figure out which one won from uh, that contest. Um, and basically in this video, I'm going to be doing a similar thing, but obviously adding the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. And I'm also adding one more category. Um, so in the previous video I did, it was just the Xbox One controller and PS4 controller, and I had seven categories. I had D-pad, analog sticks, buttons, triggers, look, feel, and features. And so in this video, I'm adding one more category called battery. Um, so yeah, I'm basically gonna step through each of these, um, explain my reasoning, and basically pick a winner for each category, and then add them up the end, and hopefully one of them comes out a winner. All right, so first of all, let me just kind of give you some background on my controllers. Um, got my PS4 controller, obviously. This is a, a gray one from the, the Batman edition. Um, this is a standard white uh, Xbox One controller and this is just a standard Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. So first we're going to start off with the D-pad. That's my uh, number one category to start off with, as you can see. And so let's take a look at the PS4 controller first. Um, so I really like the D-pad on the PS4 controller. It's nice, it's got a nice tactile feedback. Um, it's quiet, uh, it's easy to, easy to use. Um, Xbox One, I like it as well, um, but it doesn't you know, it, you don't get the, as much separation. I like how in this one you got a, a clear separation of what is right, up, left, and down. Um, this one, you know, they kind of blend together, as you can see just by how they look. Um, and it's just a little bit, it's loud and clicky. I'm not a huge fan of that. And then the Nintendo Switch controller, um, similar to the Xbox One D-pad, but it just feels, honestly, it feels a little bit cheaper. Um, not a huge fan of it. It's kind of clicky and loud and... It just doesn't feel as accurate. Um, I think the D-pad on the PS4 controller just feels the most accurate and you get the most control out of it. So for the D-pad, obviously as you can tell, I'm going with PS4. Um, and so right now I'm writing with my left hand on this, these, these check boxes, so we'll see how this goes. Um, hopefully I can get a good check there. There we go. Uh, you can read that, so that's good enough. Close enough. Um, next category we got analog sticks so that's pretty self-explanatory so the biggest difference with analog sticks on these three controllers is for the PS4 controller obviously you have these two analog sticks at the bottom of the controller and then both the Xbox One and Nintendo Switch controllers you got them kind of um, cattywampus so on the left side you got them at the top and on the right side you got them at the bottom um, and they basically got them both that way and so the placement of these analog sticks a lot of it is personal preference um, you know, if you grew up with a PlayStation controller, then you're probably used to this and like this better. And if you grew up with an Xbox controller, then you probably like this better. Um, now, personally, I've played a lot of PS4 or, you know, PS2, PS3, and PS4 in my day. And then Xbox, I've played a bunch of Xbox 360 and Xbox One. Um, so I've had a pretty equal taste of both. Um, personally, I like this kind of setup better. Um, so just right away, that kind of eliminates the PS4 controller. Um, just because I think the setup with having the analog stick up here is more convenient than down here. Um, and also on the PS4 controllers, the analog sticks just don't feel as, as grippy as either the Xbox One or Nintendo Switch controllers, um, unfortunately. That leaves us basically down to the Xbox One and Nintendo Switch, you know, which one has better analog sticks. So both the same placement, they both have a different feel of how the analog sticks grip. Um, this one's nice, you can hold it in your thumbs easily. Um, this one's nice as well. And personally, I think this one actually has a better grip, and it's got more of a, a rigid edge to it, so you can, you know, kind of hold your thumb on the edge if you need to. And they both they both click nice. Um, but personally, I think my thumbs hold better on the Nintendo Switch controller than the Xbox One controller. Um, so the se for the second category, I'm gonna go with the Switch. So let's see if we can get a check mark here. There we go. That's close enough. Um, so the third category, buttons. So this is kind of straightforward. Um, when I talk about the buttons, I'm just talking about these four right here. Um, we got another category for triggers back here. Um, but basically for buttons, just talking about these four right here. So what I'm really looking for in this category is how the buttons feel, how you know tactile they feel, how responsive they are, um, and making sure they're not you know too loud or cheap feeling. So if you start with the PS4 controller um, buttons, pretty nice. 
nice and clicky. Um, you're not gonna have any issues using them. Uh, Xbox One controller, nice as well, um, clicky. The the big difference is on the PS4 controller, they're completely pretty much on a flat uh, surface. Not quite flat, but pretty flat surface. Xbox One, it kind of round, rounds off to the edge, um, which is not a big deal, but I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, the buttons are also a little bit smaller, so it's easier to find the buttons on the PS4 controller. And then you got the Nintendo Switch controller, which is kind of a, a hybrid of both. I um, mean, you know, it's kind of a flat surface. Um, the buttons are, you know, a little bit smaller, about the size of the Xbox One controller buttons. And they, f they feel nice, you know, um, but they, they still, they feel like a tad bit cheap. Um, these, as I was saying, they're clicky and a little bit small and rounded off, so I'm not a huge fan. Um, and so in this situation, I think the PS4 has the best buttons. Um, they're big, they're easy to press, easy to see, flat surface, no issues there. I'm going with the, the buttons for the PS4 controller. Well, next up, we got triggers. So which which triggers are the best? Let's let's see. Um, so they're all a little bit different, um, obviously. So on the PS4, you got well, actually, let's just start off. Each one of them has four triggers on the back. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. They're pretty easy to compare. Uh, PS4 kind of has like a you know a, a dynamic range to it. It's not just like all or nothing. Um, so these kind of have a dynamic range for L2 and R2. Same with the, uh, the Xbox controller, kind of like a dynamic range. Um, and then the left bumper, right bumper, L1, R1. And then you got the, the Nintendo Switch buttons on the back. Which feel kind of similar to the PS4 buttons and just how they click, how they feel. Now the biggest difference with the, with the Nintendo Switch um, triggers is these two back buttons are actually, they don't have a dynamic range like the other two. It's kind of a all or nothing. Um, so that kind of takes away from the, the functionality a little bit. Um, so just because of that, I'm taking this out of the running for the triggers. Um, they just don't have the same functionality. And then the PS4 triggers and Xbox One triggers are nice. Um, but I think that the Xbox One triggers kind of fit, they fit a little bit better in your hand, like they're a little bit more natural, um, a little bit smoother, a little bit easier to tell where you are. Um, Xbox, I mean the PS4 controller is nice, but it's just kind of a harder ending this one's kind of a smooth and smooth bumper same with these bumpers right here so I'm gonna go with the Xbox one um, triggers so next up we got look um, so this one obviously is definitely personal preference when it really comes down to it you know which one do you think looks better um, but for this one I'm just gonna go up straight up and say it I think the Xbox one is the best look purely because they have so many different customization options for you know what color your controllers you can get you can even customize online and basically get your controller to look exactly how you want it. Um, the Nintendo Switch is pretty lame in that category. I'm pretty sure this is the only, well actually I think they have a couple other pro controllers, but it's like one or two different types of pro controllers, so they don't have many color options. Now the PS4 does actually have a lot of color options now. Um, they have some nice colors too. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of a lot of them, but I think the Xbox One just has you know slightly better um, color combinations that you can pick from, lots of different selection, and you know I just gotta go with the Xbox One for um, kind of how it looks. And next one is feel. So I think personally this is probably the most important category. You know how does the controller feel in your hands? I mean you're gonna be holding it in your hands for hours at a time. So basically you want whatever is gonna feel the best in your hands. Um, so from overall feel, um, they're all a little bit different. I think the PS4 is. Um, kind of stands out a little bit that it's a lot different from how the Xbox One and Nintendo Switch controller feel. Um, I think if you like one of these, you're going to like the other one. Um, now, if you like these two, you might not like the PS4 controller and vice versa. Um, so the Xbox One controller, you know, it fits really nice in your hand, kind of rests in your palm. Um, same with the Switch controller. Uh, now, the difference with the PS4 controller, it kind of rests, well, at least when I'm using it, it doesn't really rest on my palm. It rests on my fingers like this, um, just because of how it's shaped. Whereas the Xbox One, as you can see, it's kind of resting in my fingers and palms. And same with the Switch. Um, so you, you may like it one way or the other. I think they're both fine, but personally, I think the resting in my palms is a little bit easier and um, on the hands and easier to for longer gaming sessions. So now it's basically between the Xbox One and Nintendo Switch controller in this category. Um, and they're both very nice, but personally, I got to go with the Switch controller. Um, I think it just feels a little bit smoother in my hand. Um, the back is a little bit more plain, um, not as many obstacles as this one has. Um, now, in my case, I actually have this big battery on here, which creates even a bigger obstacle. Um, but even without this this big battery, it's, it's just a little bit, not as flat on the back 
as a Nintendo Switch controller is. So it doesn't, you know, this one's got you gives you plenty of room in the back for your moving your fingers. And they even got this little grippy surface on the grips that's, you know, helps us rest in your hands. So personally, I think the Nintendo Switch has the best feel to it. Um, so right now we're tied two to two to two. So it's really gonna come down to the end here. We got features and battery left. So from a feature standpoint, um, obviously they're all controllers, so they're all very similar. Um, you know, you got buttons, analog sticks, a few like a home button in the middle, a uh, start and stop button, and triggers. And then they can all they can all be charged um, from the back. Xbox One can have batteries or charged. Um, and I'll get in, I'll get into batteries next, so charging and batteries doesn't really matter in this category. But I thought I'd mention it. And then, you know, for the PS4 controller and Xbox One controller, you can use a headset or whatever. Um, now Nintendo Switch, I don't think you can. Uh, it's not as advanced as that. Uh, so I think because of that, you take the Nintendo Switch out of this category. Um, so basically, between the PS4 and Xbox One, and you know, they're both controllers, uh, both very similar. Um, now I think where this, the the PS4 stands out in this category is this touchpad. Um, so it's got a touchpad for some additional functionality in some games. It's also got a speaker and it has a light bar. So those three things put it out of out of range of the Xbox One in terms of you know, just features. Um, they may not always be needed features, but they're still cool and they're features. So, gotta go with the PS4 in this category. So, last category, it's really gonna come down to it. Um, PS4 has three right now, Xbox One has two, and Switch has two. Um, so, last category is battery. So, let's go ahead and check them out. So, let's kind of consider all these controllers just from a default standpoint. Like, right after you just, if you went to Best Buy and just bought these things off the shelf, how are these controllers gonna be configured? Uh, so, basically, PS4 has a built-in battery, um, so you can charge it with a micro USB cable, and you know, that's it. Um, Xbox One, um, right now I have this uh, custom battery that I bought from Amazon. Um, so basically, it's got a, a cover right here. Take it off, you can actually put in AA batteries, or you can buy a separate um, battery and charge it. So you kind of got both options there if you want either one, so that's nice. Um, I might be able to stick that on right now, that's a pain. And then over here on the Nintendo Switch, similar to the PS4, it has a built-in battery. Um, so you don't have to um, put in AA batteries or anything. And it's got a USB-C for charging. From a battery standpoint, which one is the best? Uh, so I think the Xbox One has the most, um, you know, kind of customizable functionality. Since, you know, you can put in AA batteries if you want to. Or you can kind of customize what kind of battery pack you got. Um, as you can see, I've got a, a big battery pack that you can put in there. Or you can get a smaller battery pack. Um, so I think that that puts it ahead of the curve just because it has some customizable options. Um, now PS4 and Nintendo Switch are, are nice from the fact that you don't have to mess with that. All you have to do is charge it. Um, but if we're going to measure them from a charging standpoint, Nintendo Switch is light years better than the PS4. You know, this on one charge, this thing lasts for like six or seven hours. It's honestly really bad. Um, so I'm going to toss this one out of the conversation for battery. So now we basically have to decide if we want some more customization or if we like having a long battery life right off the bat. Um, and so personally, for this one, I'm gonna have to go with the long battery life right off the bat. You know, this thing will last for, uh, I don't know, like 30 to 40 hours off of one charge, which is super nice. Um, it's still lightweight in the hands and it feels really nice, but it's got a big battery. And it even takes USB-C, which is really nice in this day and age, when you know all, all other devices charge on USB-C, you know, all your Android phones and um, a lot of other stuff is USB-C, whereas the PS4 was micro USB for whatever reason. Um, Xbox One, you know, it's got nice functionality, but the unfortunate part is if you don't want to use AA batteries, you gotta spend like 20 or 30 bucks to get these rechargeable batteries. So basically you just turn this from a $60 controller to a $80 or $90 controller, whereas this is like a $60 or $70 controller. Um, so I think that just puts the Xbox One out of the race since it's, you know, it's nice that it's customizable, um, but it makes it expensive having to, having to make it a rechargeable battery. Whereas the Nintendo Switch comes with a nice rechargeable battery right from the get-go. So for this category, Nintendo Switch wins. Alright guys, so as you can see, the Switch ended with 3, the Xbox One ended with 2, and the PS4 ended with 3. And you know, in a video like this, you can't really end in a tie. Um, so we're going to have a tiebreaker. And basically, to get that tiebreaker, I'm going to decide which categories are the most important. Um, and basically, whichever one has the more important categories is going to get the win. Uh, so I think the very most important category out of everything here is the feel. So I'm just going to make that number one. Um, so I think the feel is the most important. Uh, if it doesn't feel good in your hands, then, you know, why are you using it? And then I think the second most important category is actually the analog sticks. Um, so that's number two. Um, just because, you know, analog sticks, your thumbs, 
your thumbs are always on the analog sticks. You're always using, you're always moving around. You know, you use the buttons a lot, but you may not always be using the buttons. The analog sticks, you are always using the analog sticks. So I, I think that's the second most important category. Um, and third, though, I, I think buttons is the third most important category um, because that is probably the second most important thing that you are using. And after that, I think triggers are important, um, but that's on the Xbox One. So triggers and look, I'm just going to kind of eliminate from this uh, process of figuring out which one's most important. Um, so I'm just going to forget about triggers and look. So uh, basically fourth most important, I'm going to go with the battery. Because, you know, if you don't have a nice battery life, then, you know, that's, that's really going to suck for your, your gaming experience. So basically, I think the Switch's categories are a little bit more important than the PS4. Um, so that's going to make the Switch our winner. And so if you watched my previous video where I compared the Xbox One and PS4 controllers, you may be wondering how the Xbox One ended up on last when it actually got first last time. Um, and so the reason for that is because the Switch basically stole some of the categories from the Xbox One. Like in the other video, I'm pretty sure the Xbox One got feel and analog sticks. Um, so that would have made the Xbox One 4-3 to three, and the Xbox One would have won. But basically the, the Switch controller is it's pretty similar to the Xbox One controller, but just better execution. Um, which makes it a better overall controller. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe and um, leave a comment down below if you, there's a different controller that you like better. Um, and thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day.